Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is November 1st, 2023. And we got some hearty people um, <laughs> checking in with us here tonight. Um, I just want to check in with you at the beginning and then maybe at the end again with the same kind of questions, which is in your sphere, anyway, um, wherever you're teaching, working, doing, um, are people talking about the Israel-Hamas war? Um, is it being dealt with in schools? How do you feel about the fact that we're dealing with it? Um, and then, you know, there's also AI thrown in. And how is that? What kind of experience do you have in with that? <laughs> um, or what are you feeling about? Just, just sort of open. How are you doing? What's up with you? What are you thinking? David, why don't you start us off? If you don't mind. Um, it's very helpful to spend time in these conversations, both for the watching the school and also to parse the um, comments about the war. I'm not in a classroom right now. I mean, mm -hmm. haven't been in the classroom for a bit, but uh, the conversation of the war is everywhere. Um, I overhear it everywhere, um, yeah. as well as in our home life. So. And, and no one's talking about AI as a vehicle for parsing it. <laughs> right. Mm. Kylie, what about you and where you are? Kylie's on her phone, so it's going to be a little awkward maybe at times, but she, she's going to figure it out, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. As far as the AI in the space goes, I'm really interested in continuing to learn about this. I think just this now common space and this Kumo space is really really interesting and so i'm uh, actually trying to work with dr early right now on uh, trying to create a like an independent research study um for next semester so paul i know we're actually wanting to talk to you a little bit about that and start to kind of plan something for next semester and trying to use this in um, my english 102 classroom so i think um for no reason other than I'm not really on social media and don't have cable. I'm, uh, yeah, I feel like mostly if I am, if I'm on my phone or yeah, I happen to talk to people, um, this is definitely a very hot topic right now. So if anything, this space and being able to talk about it is kind of my source of my source of news. And it's also really relevant for what the unit that we're doing in my classroom right now. So I think the topic's been good. I don't know a whole lot about it. So I don't know how much I'm actually able to contribute to the conversation, but I'm enjoying the content and enjoying the space. Cool, cool. It's Chris, just going to clock, clockwise or something here. Me? Yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I, um, I'm in a classroom, and it, and it definitely comes up in conversation. I can't say that I've actually, you know, done a lesson on it. Um, I'll have my students do um, the New York Times, kind of their um, opinion chats in my media class. The, I don't know, it's like they have a topic, it seems like every day, and that has come up. Uh, yeah. Um, your, your kids are focused on local elections. Yeah, yeah, we are kind of deep into, um, they've been interviewing different mayoral candidates and stuff like that. Um, so we've been pretty local um, with our reading and, and thinking and writing. Um, so yeah, not too much except it obviously is, is on a lot of people's lips for sure. How about you, Sam? Sam, hey. so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so it, like, I've had conversations with some colleagues more extensively than I've had engaged in conversations with my students. One of my colleagues in particular, um, who's, who, who is Jewish. And so it was, it was an interesting conversation. In part was, I, I wanted to kind of debrief with him after we had the conversation. Cause I, not that I, I don't think I offended him, but you know, I, maybe I had some uh, different perspectives. And uh, I haven't brought, I want, I want to be mindful and intentional when I do bring it in the classroom. Cause I do do these like, you know, top, topical, um, you know, current event kind of, uh, you know, discussions, but 
I haven't figured out the way to like bring it in in the right intentional way. That's kind of kind of why I'm here. Um, interestingly, I've been through social media. I've been following some of the discourse from. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Lamont Hill. I mean, Mark Lamont um, out of Temple and Dr. Umar, this other guy. I don't know where Dr. Umar is from, but he's he has a, a whole different stance around. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just figuring out, I'm trying to figure things out and then like say, how do I intentionally bring in the conversation with my students? In, in an intentional and in a nuanced way. Can you, can you have, break that word have, down a little bit for us? What do you mean by intentional? Which intentional, intentional and, and my because opinion. of this because of this issue has like so global geopolitical issues. Not that other issues that I talk about with students don't. For some reason, I guess I'm more not. I don't want really to use the word fearful, but. In my mind, I like if I'm going to bring this one up, I want to do it. I want to be more. I want to be more mindful of how I'm bringing it up. Where other things, I'll take like maybe more risk on topics that I, I might like controversial topics. Because like, again, it's not I'm afraid of to controversial topics. Mm -hmm. But I that's why I've been. I, that's why I'm thinking Sam could do this. Maybe I right, let me. <laughs> well, I mean, I would agree with Sam too. I'm in that same boat. Um, because I know some kids in my class have had pretty heated exchanges over it. And I don't want to bring up something that just, I don't do well. I, I understand the intentional part of things, you know, cause this is, yes. could be a powder keg, you know, it could go south. And I don't know, I don't even know if it would be a powder keg with my kids. Listen, Chris, in, in that, like a, a lot of my students are like, they're not talking. So we're, they're not even, I don't, I'm not saying that they're not following the news or whatever, but they're not talking about it at all. Like, I haven't heard any kid mention it. And partly, like, a lot of my kids are, like, in survival mode, like, life survival mode. So if you're in life survival mode, like, somebody else's survival mode doesn't move you, doesn't interest you, you know, I I don't know. It's it just, so that, that's, what, and part of me is, like, how do I, the intentionality is like how do i make connections with like what's happening there with what's happening in their spaces so that they can see the irrelevance the relevance of it and I, like i say that's why i haven't um broached it but that's that's kind of why i came to hang out that's why the invitation was was enticing to come check, hang out and even listen and talk with other folks beyond your bedtime so i appreciate it <laughs> Uh, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Christina, you didn't get to check in. Do you want to say something? Uh, sure. I guess um, I find this a really hard topic, a hard topic, um, a topic close to the hearts of people that I'm close to um, on sort of a range of sides. So I kind of can, I mean, in some ways I can talk to my community and get a full range of you know, perspectives. Um, and I'm trying to um, just sort of be a student. I There's this mural in Philadelphia that's literally an I Ching. You get to like spin it. And um, I sort of, you can like, you're supposed to think of a question and then spin this this thing. And, and, and I was like, what should I do about, you know, what's happening? And I spun, spun it and it got to student. And I was like, oh. Okay, <laughs> so, just so take that that's heart. you, the student. Is that yeah, you? yeah, uh -huh. that's what I Ching told me. So, um, but I find it, I find myself distressed a lot. I find it the whole situation distressing. Um, so it, I find it helpful to have people, you know, this just places to talk about different aspects of it. Um, in terms of AI, I think it's like, to me, I, I think it's an interesting place to, to test kind of like what would be our, in such a fraught conversation, what does AI do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of what I'm curious about, you know, does it do more harm? Does it do, what does it do? 
like, you know, does it do something good? Um, and like Wikipedia during a conflict like this is a mess because people are, are, or like the, the community changes it all the time, right? It's like they're, I think they have to put a flag on the pages to say, actually, I haven't looked recently, but in the past, I know they flagged those pages and said, this is a hot topic and this page might change over and over again, right? And so then in a topic like this, it, like in an AI space, what happens to a topic like this? So I don't know. Fair enough. Um, I will say that my experience of, of working with all of you on these Wednesdays, I don't know how many this is now, about a month now we've been doing this. Um, I've been really learning and paying attention to what you've asked for and thought about. So one of the things you suggested early on, Christina, was that we need a tech set to put together. So I've been trying to build a collection of different things. Um, and, and I've been reading through that stuff as we're doing it and then creating AI thinking partners. Um, and I will just uh, not bury the headline. Let's just say that for me, this has been uh, one of the most profound reading experiences I've ever had, partially because of the tech set, partially because of the fraught is issues, but also because of how meaningful some of the first person experiences that we you know can get from the internet can become thinking partners and then those thinking partners and sorry to refer back to puppetry here christina but they're they're almost like these little puppets on my screen every time another news story comes up i'm like oh i wonder what she would think i wonder okay so anyway, so that's that's a really quick that's fascinating. Kind of feel, feeling level of what's been happening with me, and I'd like to see if yeah. that happens with other people. Fair enough. Um, and I, the other piece of it that I mentioned in the um, invitation to this event um, was that uh, Jessica Early at one point suggested, suggested that what we need are interviews, you know, where people from different sides and different places are saying what their life is like, right? And that's certainly made sense. Um, and and then, by the way, David, you sent me a, um, and I'll just keep talking for a second, but then then show. Um, you sent me a a nineteen year old from Gaza her her recordings um, that was published in the New York Times, and I took those, just copied her text, and put it into a thinking partner, and it became her, right? And now she is with me talking to talking about the latest you know news article that comes out so let me show you some of that is that wow that is a puppet yeah pardon yeah that is it a is puppet. a puppet yeah well that's amazing how is it a puppet um just that it's like a it's like a animation of something like bringing life to something that's inanimate yeah right Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, any further parts? Did you want to say something more? To... I wanted I, one thing Go that ahead. was yeah. very was uh, very interesting last week or the week before. Whenever, as a group, we were kind of coming up with the question: What do we do about authenticity when we're trying to mm -hmm. absorb and respond to, or maybe formulate something in relation to such? not just tragedy, but sort of visceral, immediate um, horror, right? I, I, I happened on some video today, which I'd not seen. I was on X and Twitter, and I purposely tried to avoid images of the carnage following a bombardment, but suddenly there it was. It was not, it looked like something different. I clicked it and suddenly I was in it, and it was, it was very uh, overwhelming. And then moments later, I was in a, clip with Christine Amanpour showing a Al Jazeera journalist who lost his wife and family. And so these kinds of things are so horrible and horrifying uh, and, and scary. And then the idea that we could have some first person filter. Um, so the idea of domain expertise, and there's a lot put into these systems where what's the domain expertise and, and the idea that you're going to tell the bot that you're going to set it up like a, like a, 
an acting audition. You are a something other other expert. You do these things and sort of there's been a lot of stuff shared about that as a way to direct the thought, um, which is an interesting sort of vector in terms of the design. But it's particularly interesting to think that you can go grab whole cloth first person testimony and then create these personas and to your and, point, and, Christina, and, it is it feels very puppet like and also very and also quite maybe more authentic potentially as a puppet, given that it's in theory orienting around actually spoken language from lived experience as opposed to synthesized stuff. I, I, it's like a hall of mirrors for me. It's fascinating and uh, very interesting. So, and I do want to say that uh, as, as so I, I didn't know if it would work, right? <laughs> just take yeah. transcript, put it in a prompt, just say at the beginning of the prompt, an incredibly simple thing I put at the beginning, be this person who's in this interview. And it does it. And I'm like, oh my God, you can do that. <laughs> right. So, so there's that um, sort of on the, te the technical side. But let me introduce you to the ones I've created, if that's fair. Um, I'll share my screen. But if you click on the graphic in the middle, you'll go to the collection that I'm going to show now, if I can hit the right buttons. But keep interrupting because I'm not sure. Okay, that's not the tab I want to be on, but I think that's a good start. And then I'll go find my tabs here. Okay, I do have this set up so we can click through. Love for you to kind of play as if possible, but I want to kind of introduce it. Okay, so here's the collection. You, you see the collection, yes? With the two flags on it? Okay. Yep. Thanks. thanks. Um, all right. So, I, and I've just organized it a little bit. There are 16 things on here at this point. So there is the introductory article, and maybe this keeps changing. I don't know. But the New York Times writes this, what do we know about the war? Um, and so this is the October 28th one. Um, I'm going to show you that one again. Um, so there's that introductory news story. And then here are five first-person accounts, and I'll break. I'll show you these in a little more detail. And then grabbed five poems up here as well, and then five articles, right, of different views, different kind of. So, and just to just just to say from the beginning and to the end, anybody can go into this, become a member of the uh, the group, and then upload stuff. Stuff here as well. You can add another document. So, hoping that, that happens. If you find this, uh, here's an amazing poem. We should add that to the collection. We should do that. But uh, I'm going for a second. So, the first one here, and they're not, they don't go in any particular order, but is, oh, sorry. I don't have to click. I, I think I have it set up. So this is an interview that um, is on Deconstructed, I think is the name of it, The Intercepts podcast. It's an interview with a guy from who grew up in Gaza and he now lives in Florida. But anyway, it's his experiences in Gaza. Okay, so that's um, Maram. We may not get the name right, but we'll go there. Then there's Golan story, Golan. Um, this was in the New York Times. This is his, um, this was, again, an audio. Um, it's a 30-minute audio. So the transcript is here. Um, of his kibbutz was destroyed. He actually grabbed a gun, tried to fire back. It's kind of a dramatic story, but that's, there's Golan. And then there's a view from my window, which is from the New Yorker. It's uh, an essay by a poet, um, Moshe. Um, and so, and, and it's his experiences in Gaza very recently. Um, then here's the uh, audio diary of despair, Tasneem, um, that David sent me. She's a 19 year old living in Gaza, and she just sort of talks about her life there. Um, and then, blah, 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 finally, I think I'm down to the end. Um, there's um, 
a, a transcript and there's a, the actual PBS News Hour um, with an interview with somebody who um, is hoping, and this is, you know, um, she's hoping her husband was kidnapped and not killed. She's still not sure. Um, so that there's her perspective. All right. So I want to keep this slow down enough to get a sense of. So what's possible here is that students can go into these, and, and it's how I would start. And 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 maybe I would start with the you know what we know about what's going on because this is like a a pretty short article. But then go in and talk about first person stuff. Any thoughts about? Don't worry about AI at this point. Just using first person to deal with these issues or feelings. Um, oops. oops. Go ahead, Sam. I was, I was yielded to David. <laughs> oh. David, did you want to say something? Uh, no, not at all. Sam, it's all yours. Uh, Go for it. So I did have, I did have a, a AI question slash observation. And then mm -hmm. I also wondered how, um, like, tech selection, say, like, this issue with, doc, like, where did conversations like Dr. Umar Johnson fall into, like, this discourse, so if you follow, if you follow this guy? And particularly, the reason I'm kind of, not that I'm interested in this discourse, but, like, in terms of like, how does this relate to? How do I make this connect with with my 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 my, my students, right? Because maybe some of them might listen to Dr. Umar. I don't know if they do or don't. No. So that's one thing. But the big the AI question I had, and Christina, you can weigh in. If were, were you at my um, celebration of literacy presentation where I had my students come and talk about their their engagement with AI? Well, one of my students is like. He, he thinks AI is afraid of controversy and like it's so like when we're getting to like these real sensitive things, like how so, is AI going to, you know, deal with that? And so the, I'm, I'm, I am curious about that, particularly at, at my students, like it's, it seems to want to avoid, um, you know, it, it seems like it, he was saying it seems like it wants to avoid controversy. This I'm glad is my you brought that up. I'm, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Is he talking about Chat GPT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically. Okay. Uh -huh. So I just, I just, I think that's really important to identify that um, um, that's that's a persona that uh, does avoid controversy. We can create personas instead of Chat GPT that that hold on to the controversy and the passions a little better or a lot better. So that's that's sort of a technical answer, but. Our experience here on Wednesday nights over the past couple of weeks has been the same. Like we created some some characters and they were like getting to peace talks by the end of the fourth paragraph. Right. And, and it was kind of superficial and it didn't kind of make sense, which is why we went to these first person um, points of view so that we could hold on to, you know, what's what's the heart of of the, you know, the fight. In some way, is that anybody want to add anything to that? From what, yeah. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Um, that's a great summary of also the, the 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 thinking move to go from the kind of make nice rhetoric of generic chat GPT to kind of trying to force a perspective that stays with the complexity. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Um, so I have what's in the, what's in the collection. Just so you know, is has no comments on it at all. I've sort of created a shadow um, collection where I do all my experiments, and I'm going to show you that shadow collection. Okay, it's 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 public and available too. But so that somebody can jump into this collection with their students or themselves and kind of mess around here um, is the intention. But let me show you. So 
and it didn't happen all at once. I was kind of experimenting. Um, but let me show you a poem, ask you to read the poem. Maybe uh, so I'm going to ask you to get with uh, reading with us here and then show you the thinking partners that we created for that. Does that sound OK? Um, uh, blah, where am I? Sorry. That's where we are. OK, so here's a poem. It's called Your Village. Um, it's not very long. It's, there is a video of it, but um with the poet reading it but would one of you volunteer to read the poem first of all sure thank you <laughs> christina just volunteered <laughs> i was volunteering it's true okay okay once in a village that was burning because a village is always somewhere burning and if you do not look because it is not your village it is still your village in that village is a hollow child. You drown when he looks at you with his black, black eyes. And if you do not cry because he's not your child, he is still your child. All the animals that could run away have run away. The trapped ones make an orchestra of their hunger. The houses are ruined. Nothing grows in the garden. The grandfather's grave is there, a small stone. Under the shade of a charred oak, who would brush off the dead leaves? Who would call his name for morning prayer? So I can't read this. Where will they, the ones who slept in this house and ate from this dirt? It ends there. Yep. Wow. So just to mark that, you know, moving to poetry might be a mindful, intentional thing too with students. Um, but just say that. Um, I'm going to move away from the scholar ones and just move to the ones I just showed you. So Golan, who is um, going to ask for another reader, if we could, um, just so we can see these, hear these. Um, this is his response to the poem. And I just asked, what do you see in this poem? This is a thinking partner that you could use on any article or a poem. Uh, trying to make it bigger. Okay, I can read that. Thanks, Chris. Remember, his um, kibbutz was wiped out basically by on, on October seventh. The burn of this poem hits deep. It's words like the smoke rising from the ashes of the village it speaks about. Once in a village that is burning because a village is always burning somewhere. This dreadful normality of violence, of loss, is something that we in our kibbutz have experienced too keenly. The haunting image of the hollow child with black, black eyes painfully resonates with our own children who have seen unthinkable horrors. Reading through lines like, and if you do not cry because he is not your child, he is still your child, I'm reminded of my own helpless feeling of knowing my children will never be the same again. Their horrifying experiences are an unimaginable burden they must carry. And the poem seriously captures this feeling of collective sorrow and shared trauma. The final lines, where will they, the ones who slept in this house and ate from this dirt, leaves a, a lasting wrenching ache, echoing the uncertainty we face. Where will we go? what will become of us, the survivors. This poem encapsulates the intense feelings of helplessness, fear, and uncertainty that we right now experience. It reminds us of the pain of a burning village reaches far beyond its borders, affecting us all as humans. You can read about my firsthand experience of the attack on our Israeli kibbutz here. And just a technical note, we won't click on that now, but if you did, it, it now goes to the now comment version of that. Uh, that you can then comment on. Um, but that's one of the things that we realized we could do also is like almost cite the thing that uh, they're saying. So, quick reactions, thoughts? Yeah. So this um, yeah. basically you, you fed in um, his first person narrative. Is that right? Mm -hmm. of this person? That's right. And then, and then went to the poem and said, hey, 
what do you think of the poem? And this is what he answered. It, the prompt also says, please quote from the text you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, Shall we move on? Because I think we're, but feel free to slow me down a bit. Well, I guess one thing I would say is it, it doesn't really seem to take sides. Hmm. You know, which I think this topic seems to lend itself to, you know, this or that. But that one um, seemed to kind of reflect the universality of the poem, I suppose. But it didn't didn't really say negative things about the other side. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure what to do. I could we could continue reading. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Check with you. Okay. So this is the Palestinian poet, and um, his he wrote an essay in the New Yorker, characterizing his. He's there in Gaza right now. Um, somebody want to jump into this a little bit, or do you want to read it silently? You asked a slightly different question, and so I did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, so I'll read that, and then. So, what words, images, or ideas? stand out to you in this poem? How did this poem make you feel? What did you think the poem is communicating? What do you think the poem is communicating? What What do you make of the final line of the poem? They set them up a little better, <laughs> perhaps. Christina, do you want to read? You... Sure. Okay. Day, day in and day out, the recurrent afflictions faced, my home, faced by my homeland, by the people I call family, are sobering realities. Alana Bell's poem resonates profoundly with my experience. There's a haunting universality to it. A village is always somewhere burning. And in it, these echoes of fire, destruction, displacement that our shared human story is found. As a child born in El Shati refugee camp and now witness to the man-made disasters ravaging my country, I understand the hollow child. I've seen those black, black eyes reflecting stories of hard pain to articulate the young and the old alike. The, slight, the sight is heart-wrenching, yet it's a scene that plays out repeatedly in different corners of the world. It's a universal portrait of war. The emptiness and ruins of homes rendered lifeless by war mirror my own experiences. Nothing grows in the garden. This line hits particularly hard. I remember my father's labor of love, the fruit trees, and the vegetables that he planted in our garden. Now I look out at barren lands where these trees once bloomed and the laughter of children once filled the air. Yet despite the danger, there's a strange kind of resilient resilience that Bell captures in her words. It's a force that propels us forward even when everyone around screams halt. It's the will to forge ahead that I feel every time I pedal my bike, the sole mode of transport available in the dire circumstances through rubble, Build streets carrying whatever I hope I can muster. Bell's poem is a stark reminder of our interconnected world where suffering in a distant village becomes a shared burden, a collective sorrow. And if you do not look because it's not your village, it's still your village. This line hits me shattering like a shattering mirror, reflecting the destruction in my land, yet resonating universally. The cries and pleas are not only of Palestinians, they're of humanity. The final line of the poem hangs unfinished, much like the lives touched by war, trauma, and displacement. Yet it leaves space for us to weave our narratives of hope, resilience, and restoration. Despite the seemingly unending ordeals, we continue to script our stories, all the while nurturing the dream of a peaceful homeland. You can journey through the fragmented landscape of my village, hear the whispers of worn torn walls, and immerse yourself in the resilience of people in my essay, The View from My Window in Gaza. Uh, you just like you'd walk through a door, a different realm, click this link to step into a world you thought you knew. So Chris, back to you, even uh, just thinking about what you said about the universality, there is universality, but there's also a different perspective from these two. Is that fair to say, or am I? Yeah. Well, they both relate to, I mean, there's some similarities in their responses, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what they're doing is not, they're just not 
blaming anyone. It's more descriptive. Sorry, I talked to you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you for reading. Um, shall, shall we, yeah, go ahead. Shall we go on or sorry? Uh, One thing yeah. that strikes me about this is that we began this exercise in an effort to create an authentic response to the events on the ground, say. Mm -hmm. and, and as I'm listening to these really, um, you know, it's as though the voices that are, it's interesting to situate them to the point about puppets. It's as though they've been invited into English classes, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're critiquing their experience from that point of view. And it sounds very um, considered and constructive in that way. And it does, it picks up the language and the, and the descriptive detail, it draws those connections. But it's, it's, it's kind of striking to, to see, to, to think of that persona situating relative to a text. And in that sense, it's a good modeling exercise, right? I'm, I'm try, as I was listening, I was trying to imagine Sam's kids, like, is this, you know, like, mm -hmm. this a student as a good approximate stance to have towards an experience or the reading of a poem? Um, it's fascinating to think of what, what, how the lens can be organized. Um, I'm struck by that. I'm not sure what to do with it. And then Maybe I was just wondering how, uh, like, how much of it is biographically? Like, was his interview talking about riding his bike through yes. the streets? Yes. So all of that is factual to the yeah. It comes right out of his essay, right? Mm -hmm. Is it was? Does that answer your question, Chris? Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Jump fast. Yeah. It sort oh. of reminded me for a second. The, just that mm -hmm. I can grab this idea that like sometimes maybe the most important way, the important thing to do in these conversations is to like work, not try to, to not other people. Right. And especially none of us are Palestinian and none of us are Israeli in this mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and so like, what is our job, <laughs> you know, like is our job to find out who's responsible or is our job to actually like practice not othering people or whatever and practice hearing, I don't know. It's just something like that striking me. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna hop in here and talk, talk about um, my dilemma of like bringing this into my, to my students kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, when the um, situation in um, Ukraine happened, uh, again, I was less hesitant. And there was some controversy around the way uh, some African folks have been treated or black folks mm -hmm. have been treated during the um, uh, exodus of folks from um, from. From, from yeah, there the, were Africans the there. I remember. Yeah, yeah, and so that that I, I you know, I, I brought it into the class, had a discussion. You know, what are you guys thinking? You know, it was controversial. It was a lot of fodder, but I had no like no hesitation. But I'm hesitating with this, and part of me is like thinking, why the hesitation? And I and I, I really don't know. I mean, people's, I feel like on both sides, people feel an existential like crisis here to their, their existence. But to this poem, but, but to that point, to this poem's point, like, you know, like suffering is suffering. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, like, what what happened in in Russia, and you know us. We I mean we were watching it live. You know, seeing you know, like old children and old women. You know, being forced out of their homes and community, and you know, all, all of that. And but yeah, I I guess maybe 
part is the hyper the hyper coverage of it i think is maybe heightened my sensitivities to almost Almost uh, like a uh, part of the reason, like, uh, or how much, how much am I numb? How much are my students numb? You know, because of the constant coverage. And then the new, to me, honest, like, uh, unfortunately, the news that I that I digest, like, on the mainstream news, is is it hasn't been nuanced as well. And so, like, and again, I don't really want to bring something to my students in this case that's not nuanced and other, so I don't know what what to bring. And so, so anyway, thanks. Like this is helping me think, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to have any resolution, but I'm, I'm at least I'm being thoughtful and intentional about it. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to get off the poem, um, but I do want to show that you know. Um, Shaylee, who's missing her husband, talks about her whole experience in relationship to the poem. But then Tasneem talks about the poem in relationship to her in Gaza City, right? Um, actually, I have Goli coming here twice. And then the Palestinian. Um, anyway. So you can get different points of view. I rush in and say that we zipped right by the fact that we would spend, I, with students, spend some time just getting their views, their thoughts about the, the first person stories first, right? And the news stories. So that could be like, and then, and then, and then, and then at what point you would bring in the AI? I don't know, right? But here for us to think about, talk about. I want to just jump to, if I could, just to get more thoughts here. This is the um, no article from the Times. I stopped on this paragraph with most people. Um, who did we read here? I just want to see. So again, um, these characters comment on the news story, right? Um, let's read Tasneem. She's a 19-year-old. Somebody want to read that for us? David, it was your article. <laughs> Can you read that for us? Sorry. Sure. Could, could, you, um, and, and could, you, could you zoom it in? Um, I'm on a different computer. It's not nearly as... You can also zoom it. I don't know if that helps, but yeah, I'm trying to, Christina. It goes to like 200 and back. That's a, oh, a new, okay. new yeah. computer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Paul's question. So, so my question was, uh, what are you feeling when you read this summary of the past few weeks? Tasneem says, reading the summary left me with a heavy heart and a lump in my throat as I comb through each harrowing line. I realized that mortal death is not only one, one is not the only demise one can suffer. With each attack, a piece of my spirit dies too. I'm living and breathing, yet I feel dead inside. My old life feels snatched away, a stark contrast to my childhood of making a difference. Quote on, I'll quote on October 7th, Hamas terrorists staged a surprise attack on Israel, killing more than 1,400 people. In retaliation, Israel's government vowed to destroy Hamas and unleash a devastating barrage of airstrikes against Gaza. Quote, the concept of normal is elusive. A simple shower, a safe trip to the bathroom, or having a peaceful sleep sound like fairy tales. Every bombshell they drop not only obliterates my favorite spots in Al Rimal, but the essence of who I used to be hopeful girl with dreams and plans of studying anatomy and physiology. I wrote, quote, I don't know why they bombed my favorite restaurant in Al Ramal. They take from me my best memories. They steal from my night, my routine. Quote. Each day brings calculated uncertainty. We don't know who will live to see the dawn or what place will they, they will target next. The moment that follows will be Effect will be excited, will be etched in blood and tears with heartache, heartbreak, 
shredding over the heels of dread. In the eternal volley of pain, I'm forced to flee my own home, as if living amid constant fear of, of, of dying or isn't suffering enough. I'm thrust into homelessness too, writhing in pain, writhing in a pain so profound it feels like it feels numbing. But to hear that we should evacuate right now to the south from the north of Gaza Strip, my family, we are not going anywhere. End quote. Cal calamity doesn't announce its arrival; it just barges in and strips you of everything you hold dear. Being under an imminent fire quote fire belt attack where the endless strikes that follow epitomize the nightmare reality we inhabit. In the thick of death, death and despair, I pour my heart into these diary entries. You might be wondering how, it, how it's like living on the brink of death. Is there any hope left? Or have we des deserted that too, like our home? Listen to my audio diary, despair to grasp the shred of shreds of hope I cling to in this painful saga of survival. Right. And if you click that link, you would go to it if you wanted to. Go ahead, so, Sam, jump in. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to jump in. It's like going back to my point around, like, a lot of my kids are in survival mode, right? A mm -hmm. lot of my kids are, are in, um, I mean, I, when you start talking with our students, and it might be similar to your, uh, your students around the country as well, a lot of our kids are depressed. And like bringing this, <laughs> like we have to be, again, that's where we're the intentionality because we have to be mindful. Like I'm dealing with a bunch of depressed kids already. I bring mm -hmm. in her perspective, which is, is harrowing, is, is visceral, is real, but like we're going to deepen the depression. Like, and how do you do that? Like, again, how do you do that with sensitivity and yeah. Mm -hmm. that's 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 a whole lot uh, and i as i'm as, as i was listening i'm like thinking about all my all my depressed kids they read that <laughs> again that's just gonna just make it worse yeah. and i don't know how you got how do you guys deal with your kids that are depressed when it comes to like stuff like this I don't have easy answers to that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I know. I mean, when you're in the classroom, you see, we, you, you, I mean, oh, you're in the classroom too, Paul. But I'm like, but mm -hmm. we're we're in a classroom, like, we're seeing the level after COVID. I, I don't know if you guys are saying, but the level of like more, and then with the the onslaught of like they're on their phones all the time, getting fed, you know whatever they're being fed and so i'm wondering if that's a part of the answer it's like they're getting this anyhow right but yeah now but this is a kind of controlled group activity or could, could be right so that we can have conversations around you know the horrificness of it yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm afraid the counselor will be coming to me like Sam, what are you doing? <laughs> I used to get that with my middle school counselor. She like, what are you doing with those kids? What are you reading? What are you, what are you having them write about? Like I'm being faulted for their natural inclinations and but like you say, running away from it. Not that that doesn't that doesn't solve it. But again, that's but I think we stu do need to be like intentional around it. Yeah, I guess up. partly what I try to do, and then this is a difficult one to say this, what I'm about to say is, you know, I try to think about solution kind of stuff, whereas like, you know, this is definitely, um, you know, solutions are pretty elusive to this particular setting. But yeah, that's one of the salves, I guess I try to do is like, yeah, there's lots of problems. It's like, who's working towards solutions? um that's one thing i try to do um but um paul i was gonna mm -hmm. i don't want to switch too much from sam's point because it's pretty important but um paul i noticed that in the one comment the israeli uh kidnapped person's partner yes. i think 
because so far all three of these things have been like um this deeply um connects with my experience of a lot of despair but the mm -hmm. one i noticed right below that um there was an interesting we're, kind of we're, um, we're on the article yeah yeah the comment right below the one that we just read okay i thought uh, there was a little bit something a little bit different because so far it was always all of those things have been like i have experienced you know really bad things and this poem mm -hmm. or the story reminds me of those things but can mm -hmm. you pull up that um where shaley i no. think so okay i can't see it right now so she says um you're not sharing your screen in case you think you are oh i did think i was <laughs> That's why you can't see Chris. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's that? Okay. So there was, okay. The part, um, I'll just read the first few sentences. It's a devastating reality to wake up to every day. So this is very similar in tone to what we've been hearing. The violence that occurred on October 7th, resulting in the horrific loss of over 1,400 innocent lives is beyond comprehension. War is never the answer. This part I think is different. And seeing my homeland engaging in terrible airstrikes leading to the death of more than 7,000 people is truly heartbreaking. Um, I thought that was that's a little bit different in tone than the others. And that is like um, reflecting on her own side's part in the misery. You know, the other mm -hmm. ones have all been like, I am experiencing a lot of misery and I can relate. This one seems to be a little more self-reflective about the cause of some of this misery. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't know, that was just an observation. I it seems different. Hmm. Um, and I knew we wouldn't have, uh, just, a, just a point to this. Um, I did experiment with taking the, so Golan's story, for example, he's an Israeli, whose kibbutz was destroyed, taking a paragraph from there um, and then asking um, the Palestinian who grew up in Gaza to comment on what happened here. He says it's heartbreaking, there's a cycle of fear, but then I kept pressing him and said, do you see any solutions? So there is more of that kind of dialogue with what happened there you know, no easy, no easy solutions to any of this, which I think is appropriate. But that possibility exists too, of having these characters talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, we zip through this really, really fast, and I need to think about how to solve that. I want to show you that on this page, there is a table of contents that suggests that there's the introductory. There's five first-person accounts, five poems, five articles to kind of go through. You know, the idea here is you would have choice. And then under each of these um, thinking partners, there is an example of how that thinking partner works, right? So these, these click to those. How are, you know, how to manage this with students like you're describing, Sam, and like you have as well, I, you know, leave it up to you guys. <laughs> or what are you thinking at this point? I mean, it's too much, but is there a piece of it you could start with? Or is there, what do you, yeah. What do you think? I guess I'm wondering, like, what would be, what's my first task if they're going to annotate some of this collection what what am i having them look what what's going to be the first thing to comment on what are my instructions i guess and my thing this year i'm teaching you know i'm teaching african-american history and like i say oh when, when the the situation happened in ukraine with the africans up you know that made the tangent tangential connection but like I mean, there's the universal, the universal empathetic approach that the poem uh, elicits that, you know, it's beyond like race, but then how do I make the bridge? You know, again, how do I make it connect with my students? I'm still, I'm still figuring it out. And maybe that with the combination of my 
the level of depression from my kids have, like have made me like be more hesitant to take risks that I might normally take with you know putting controversial stuff out there. I'm, I I really I really don't have the answer even myself like why I haven't yeah I mean this with my kids. I I just want to repeat what I said earlier because I do think there is some thought here that this stuff is in the air already and might be part of what is contributing to the depression or the confusion, the, you know, like what the hell's going on, the kids feel. And somehow bringing it in a manageable group conversational way might address some of that for them. Does that make sense? Yep. So, the, but the other thing that you mentioned is, you know, I'm teaching this class and, and, you know, I've gotten that feedback a lot, like, Hey, I, I would have to submit this for, you know, it's, it go it's, I can't fit this in my curriculum now. And I, I want to kind of wonder about that too, that we have schools where, you know, there's a there's a boat, and you know, this this I mean, this thing is happening in the world, and our curriculum doesn't have room for it. But yeah, so or or do I or do I bring in the perspective like again? And that I think that's I don't know if that's a responsible thing. Do I bring in like Dr. Umar? And again, I'm I might keep mentioning this. You guys may not know this 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 guy. Uh, Umar Johnson, he's a he's a guy, he's a he's from Philly and he's controversial. He's a pan Africanist, maybe, maybe he's a pan Africanist anyway. But anyway, he's like, uh, his view was basically, um, he has like Africans shouldn't have sympathy for the Arabs because the Arabs, you know, this all this historical, like, they they haven't supported they haven't supported black folks they 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 wouldn't have any tears for you why why are we why are we being uh why are we caring about them that you know this kind of like this kind of stuff right and again i again i don't know if my kids are listening to this guy maybe they are um but like bringing that bringing his perspective and could be like okay well there's some people that are like taking a different stance around this and or even the way our current like political messes around uh you know giving aid to israel and like complicating it with our politics and all that it's, it's just like you say it's just a it's just a big mess yeah i think that's part of what we're all feeling um, certainly just want to say that he, he, his perspective absolutely could be put into this collection, right? Um, and, and it's just worth saying that, uh, you know, if we created a thinking partner with his, you know, with his way of thinking, then that thinking partner could comment on the New York Times article, right? So that's, that's the, uh, the play here. But, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty, his Wikipedia article, he's got other controversial issues. <laughs> oh, he, I think that he thrives on that, and that, that's yeah. kind of his, his, his stick, and so. Um, he's a Philadelphian, it looks like, so. Yeah, and, yeah. So, but Sam, your question of, are, are they listening to him? Yeah, that's. Now, we, 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 we sped through that, too. Um, just to so we could get to the examples, but I, you know, spend a lot of time just talking to kids about what they're hearing and thinking, and you know what's going on. What do you know? I mean, partially you're going to get back. You know, I don't know anything, but but not totally. You might get some things back, right? Do you think that's no, a way to start? Is yeah, 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 and and. Like I say, last year I I would bring in uh, other like again popular topics like hey, but what 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 do black folks think about this? You know, and so like like what are black folks thinking about this? Well, and I mean, he is a black folk person, and like and and I don't know, you you guys are familiar, you might be more familiar with um, 
Mark Lamont, Lamont Hill, yeah, who took a different stance than Umar's, but his stance may still not be like uh, acceptable to a, a, a bunch of other folks. But yeah, he, he his stance is still way way different from Dr. Umar, and they've like jostled jost, jostled a little bit, you know. Mainly on like social media, like you know, everybody's on the social media sometimes talking too much. <laughs> okay, I don't know where to go here. <laughs> uh, we do want to kind of finish for now. Um, did I did want to, just to say I totally expect that as soon as you put up you know five perspectives people are going to say yeah but there are these other five and that's great and we should get those in there too you know i don't know the intentionality that you spoke of earlier or at the beginning sam i think i don't want myself or the students to have to take a stance on anything right i want them to be as confused as it is if there's if that's few if that's fair, I think. But it's just how I feel about it. I just saw so Elise yeah. shared this article, this Edwig article, right? About how Yeah, and that's it. That's already in our collection. Is but, it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um Anyway, I haven't read that yet. Uh, no, uh, thanks again for the encouragement for me to come along on this ride. Uh, it's not like I haven't been thinking about this stuff, but I just haven't, yeah. I haven't taken any risk, and I, I wasn't. And a part of me was like, why am I not? And it's helping me think a little bit more. Cool, cool. Thank you, and thanks for that article. And uh, let's see where this goes. And, but uh, Chris, yeah, but uh, I'm seriously, I'm 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 going I'm going ahead, I'm going to head off because. Yep, yep, we're we're done. I'm shut, I'm, thank you, I'm thank you, off. thank you. Okay, you're shutting off. Thank <laughs> you, thank you for coming. Paul, one question. Yes, yes. I was wondering about like using their full names as the thinking partner. Like, uh -huh. if they're because they you're sort of you've made them into a puppet. <laughs> not that not their person so yeah in this context i wonder about like giving them an alter or maybe even just first name or something so yes except that every time they talk they also link to their their original where where that talk came from mm -hmm. so the fact that they are real people is is would make me think maybe to keep it, but I don't know. But the real person wrote the real article. The real person didn't respond to the text. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, to, to just push that point a little further, it could be to read a perspective a lot like this or, you know. Because, you know, it is a charge situation. You, you wonder about somebody misrepresenting that person to people who want to do them harm. I worried about that. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like what Chris said there that, you know, to read something similar to her, you know, that, that might be helpful. Sure. Yep. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how I'd feel about someone saying, you know, taking one of our conversations and saying, here's this teacher in Salt Lake City who's now going to respond to, um, you know, something, and it's not me responding to it. You know, the, uh, it's very, it would be very kludgy. I mean, whenever I on chat GPT, I was using it today, and I, I told it not to go put the little coda at the end of everything where it's gone and scraped my bio endlessly. It says, because you're interested in the teaching of writing and technology and whatever, would this, you know, I'm like, stop with that. And, um, it did, and I told it what to say at the end of its prompts, and so that I would be encouraged to think more. And it did that. Um, it's very kludgy and it's very uh, in your face, but it does. It, ra it raises a really good concern, and there are all kinds of issues around it. But 
to the extent mm -hmm. these pieces were introduced and you could put it in the prompt this is a synthetic creation of x that does the following i don't know it, it sort of interrupts the idea of the first person piece but once we get into this in these kinds of settings the the exercise is actually modeling personalities and points of view and putting them in motion like a puppet show so maybe it's a piece of the engagement and not sort of the fourth wall i don't know there's something to that and it, it does beg the question like just in terms of liability certainly but it makes the whole exercise more transparent to really be have grasped that the way we're talking about it now. Um, it also makes the reading of the scripts clum clumsy to have that in there as a constant little bracket, but maybe that's useful. That's well, I, I do have the word assimilator, but it's at the end. But it's, it's at the can, end, yeah. We can move that to the beginning. And then I mean, we can take simulator the last names be, off. Yeah. Simulator could be the last name. You know, Golan simulator, mm -hmm. Abba simulator. You know, so that's it's nice. like, yeah. so it's clear that that's what it is. You know, yeah, that works. Yeah, Avatar. I mean, the, the 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 nice idea of citing your pieces and pulling out text and using primary sources and doing that uh, that that good etiquette, good mm -hmm. English hygiene to sort of cite and so forth does present issues and maybe there's a way to so that the last paragraph that's that ends up saying hey you want to see more of my story could yeah. instead say everything you know above here was made up sure and then but if you want to see the real story go here could, that would that would fit i think mm -hmm. yeah cool cool Is that what you were thinking, Chris? Just to yeah, I just think in a situation like this, you know, like the woman's husband is currently a hostage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeeks, you know, the, that could, yeah. I don't I mean, this is very far-fetched, but someone in, you know, who wanted to do that person harm. Yeah. Anyway, it does seem to be something, uh, to mask, I'd say, identity of real people who are in danger. Oi. Uh, all right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk to you again. Lots to think about. <laughs> okay. Thanks very Thanks much. So much. Thank Thanks. you.